Hello everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play Star Traders Frontiers. I'm your host, Color Spade. It's episode 12, it's the year 233, week 30. We have contracts. And what we have here is 22 weeks for this short little one, so we're going to go get that taken care of. It's just a drop off for a little bit of cash. It's not a big deal, but we don't want the, the pay rate to diminish. It reduces drastically very sharply for being overdue so you know free pizza and all that it's like it's not delivered on time I'll tell you all a funny joke about that about back in the days when Domino's was first becoming you know the delivery pizza place and uh and delivery was a completely foreign concept to a lot of us. And it was like, whoa, what is this? We can just order pizza and it'll show up at our house? Uh, which, of course, you know, revolutionized takeout food and stuff like that. Well, then, many, many years later, I joined the Air Force and, and I worked in a top secret lab on nuclear missiles. And the slogan we had for working, when you when you worked with the ICBMs, the slogan, since they... They're intercontinental ballistic missiles. They shoot out of a tube and they go around the world. And our and they go around the world very fast, by the way. So our slogan was, 30 minutes or your next one's free. <laughs> Take that for what you will. All right. Attention, grabbing ball. Look, tactic skill is 61. <laughs> A control ball starts in the spice hall, but you are able to wrap it up before it turns too violent, or the security forces resort to drawing the weapons. For a few minutes, the entire district is looking your way. Unhappy with your conduct, the security officer chews your ear off but fails to notice the handoff. Easy 31k for that. Great. To the map. Let's level some people up. Pilots. Pilots. When spying an orbit of a system. What is this? Reduce fuel costs. We'll do that. Next. What are you looking at here? Oh, our commander. Military officer. Yeah, he's getting his next... Oh, he's getting multiple jobs. Let's go... Like that. Our assassin gets another level. And now it's 11. Our crew dog. What's our crew dog going to get for us? Oh, we need another. We need a couple more of these that that take uh, <coughs> purchase your crew ship of crippling effects, especially because those can take away reactor points, and that really sucks. And our E tech, yeah, inspire and replace it with a credit skim or score reward card. Those are just, just really nice. Okay, so run to ground is three years four jumps it is the one that is quickly going to. Reduce. Oh, so we have this. Ship report. The enemy has 14 cargo and 36 crew. It's a Terox dart with 2,015 hull points. Um, captain. Our captain's level 19. Components damaged. You can't see the rest of what this says down here. Oh, you have to scroll. None. Log entries. Crew entries. Cargo hold. Fugitive Lee. Hmm. Yeah, see, this right here. What I'd really like to see is a readout that would tell me the weapons so I could learn them over time and be like, you know, if it says this is the X3 ray gun, we'd be like, ooh, that's really bad. That outclasses us. Let's get the hell out of here. Um, otherwise, you know, this, if you just go by this, it's like, yeah, we should probably win. But uh, as it is. Since I can't trust that, since it's what's called an unreliable narrator, we'll leave it behind. Oh my goodness. Okay, right down here. Dock Cluster. I do like some of the names of these systems are really cool. I always thought it was really, really cool in uh, Privateer. When they had names of the systems, places were like New Detroit, and I was like, "Oh, this is awesome!" Um, I loved that. It. it was it was really easy to learn the geography of all the systems because the names made sense to me. Here, some of these names are really cool. Like Dark Cluster is awesome. Brian's Belt, cool. 
Fifth Divide, I still don't remember where that one is, but I like the name. Hyperion Loop, that's awesome. Cadrino Chaos is great. The Cimmerian Belt, Iron Forge Quarter. Some of these are really, really good. Catherine's Loop. Um, I mean, they're not Cobra's Helix. That's cool. They're good names. Hollow Pillars, I love it. I just need to memorize where they are. This I have no idea how to pronounce. Now we're getting into like French or something, and I'm just going to call this French toast. Um, Alpha Red Swath. <laughs> it's like, oh man, it's, yeah. I just, I just gotta memorize them. But they, they're good names. Good names. Names mean a lot in, in fiction and fantasy. You gotta, you gotta have good names. They count. They matter. I see that a lot. Beta reading other people's books. Especially for fantasy authors, they'll go, they'll create these really weird names for the characters because obviously they want it to, to elicit fantasy, but it has to roll off the tongue, you know, like Aragorn rolls off the tongue, Legolas, it's great, Gimli, you know, like, I mean, Tolkien was a linguist, so he understood, you know, it's, you gotta be able to say it. It can't sound like you just dropped a bunch of pots and pans on the floor, you know. What's your name? It's like, what the hell was that? It sounds like Chewbacca screaming at you. I mean, I think sometimes people forget you have to be able to say the name. And and if you were so fortunate that it would get made into a movie someday, you'd have to have other people be able to say the name. Actors and directors. and I mean, you, you know, make your names pronounceable. That's what I'm saying. Make it so the, the human beings can say these things. Alright. This is war. And in war, the only crime is to lose. Actually, no, that's not the only crime. That's why there are war crimes. <laughs> oh... You're fired for being too stupid to be on my crew, buddy. And I lost somebody. Oh, I didn't. I wasn't paying attention. I lost someone. Um, I lost an E Tech, obviously. I lost an E Tech because I'm down on that. Well, okay. So this is really interesting. Uh, let's do this first, and then we'll talk about this next thing. Oh, Xeno artifacts. Oh. I'm not gonna re-roll that risk card, but I. Kind of do and don't want to. I knew I was gonna. Yeah, just, I kind of do and I kind of don't. Uh oh. Okay. How tough are these particular zines? Oh no, this is not good. Look. 20, 24, 20. Oh. oh. Sister girl. And you still don't have one of your better skills, which makes their morale drop. Um. Alright. So here's what I want to know if this is a coincidence. Look at that little logo down here. It kind of looks like the Paradox logo <laughs> that they have in Stellaris. Um, is that intentional? <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm not saying if it is or not, but it looks, it looks really similar. All right, drill this thing. Right. You, they're going to want to hit you, so make them pay for it. Okay, you. Same thing. And now you. Okay, you can do that one because it's going to give her a little bit more health. Oh no, Doc. Alright, you, my man. This is more to make sure that you can hit things. Kill that one. I need some better skills. There are, there are talents that you can get that you can shoot with that'll cause up to three of their initiative to go away and those are the ones I like to have because then when you're dealing with like an alien that has two initiative left you shoot them and hit them and it goes down to zero and you remove an action from the equation which is always a good thing alright what are we at? you're at two and this costs twelve initiative to use which would put you in the penalty um, of course, it would let you do a really fancy thing next turn. 
might get might be the only move you get. <clears throat> Alright. Keep him up there. And sure. To everybody, just in case. Stab. Okay, dude. This. You know what? Bio poison damage for three turns. Let's do this. Let's still do this poison work on that guy. Uh oh. Just gonna take him down. Okay, what do you got? You're at eight, and this costs twelve. Resisted. All right. This is so much harder on hard mode because on hard mode they basically don't miss. Every single time they attack, they hit, and it's just it kills your crew really fast. I still haven't really figured out how to fight Xenos on hard mode. <laughs> it's like Mission Impossible. Let's see, who wants to die? Oh, I can't. I can't hit him. Okay. I can hit him with that. It'll probably kill him. Oh well. A dead Xenos better than a living one. Okay, sister, here's your chance. Crippling blade attack with plus ten melee accuracy, damage, armor piercing, successful hit causes minus three initiative. Eight bleed requires but ends stealth mode. Yeah, I sure hurt this guy. Oh, I thought I'd do more damage than that. What a big surprise that was. Immovable, but I can shoot back at you. Strike back at you. Okay. More buffs. And you, Sister Girl, you got 14. So these are going to be... It's not like he needs the poison, but... Poison that one. Oh, you missed. That's terrible. That's not acceptable. Yeah. And you've got eight. Okay, what do we have here? Bio flesh. It'll probably just kill him. Okay. You want to go into stealth mode again? Oh, you missed. <laughs> In that case, I don't wait for you, but the thing is dead. Well, well, well. <clears throat> Full morale for the crew. Oh, no, we couldn't be so lucky to get that one, could we? More Xeno combat? How about not? <laughs> How about we get mission success instead? Hey! Almost like somebody was listening. Oh, look. Look over here. It's Galen Dumut. I think he's going to be Galen the Dead. Yep. Oh, look. You put yourself in the second position. The most vulnerable. And you got shot. And you got killed. Oh, I hate it when those guys shoot. They're so deadly. They hit you, they basically one shot you. Although, on my end, when I'm using a sniper rifle, that doesn't happen. I don't one shot anybody. Even if they're really fancy sniper rifles. So it's like, mm -hmm. that's why that's why you don't see me use them when I haven't, I haven't had any luck using them. So doctor, tell me what's wrong here. What's wrong with this hole in my head? What's wrong? What's wrong? Is that I put it there? 
Oh goodness. Doc's got this. I got a good doctor. She's got a lot of initiative points. Oh, sister. You're done. Okay. So now we pick up a prisoner. We're able to transport them. Excellent. And we got paid 106 for that part of it. <laughs> Thank you. And there's artifacts. Yes. Excellent. <laughs> we get filled up with that and take that to a black market. That'll be nice. All right, let's let's do this. I want to talk about this. I did not know this, and so this is why I love having comments on these videos because people can tell you things that you didn't know, and this is fantastic. I thought, for instance, let's think about looking at an e-tech. I thought that these things in parentheses were uh, active attributes and active skills of theirs. So that was why I was trying when I'm electing people when I'm hiring people I'm trying to grab people with skills um, what I I thought these were related to their hidden talents so I thought oh blades that must mean they have a hidden talent related to blades nope what that means is uh, I was told is that these skills become active if they get promoted to officer so obviously this would be a, a character that you would want to promote to an officer to turn into like you know uh, an assassin swordsman that's a great thing I had one character on one of my hard runs that had Doctor. Well, then my Doctor died in combat, as pretty much all of my characters did. And so I promoted this. It was like a pilot that had some ridiculously high number of Doctor, like six or seven or something. So I promoted her and turned her into Doctor. And that worked out well for a while until she also died because hard mode is really hard. And um, that so that was cool. Now, this person isn't anybody that I would actually want to hire because uh, look, her stats, her attributes are really bad. 12, 14 strength, uh, 16 quickness, 13, and no. <laughs> no. No, no, no. But th th that's what I wanted to talk about, and I don't mind dismissing them. We're not going to hire anybody here, but I wanted to talk about that because I, th I thought it was really good information for me, and that was really useful. <clears throat> so, this person here has what? Pending decision. Promised. We must procure 22 units something and yeah frozen food no i'm not i'm not your merchant i'm not your huckleberry i don't do that merchant stuff now someday i probably will do a merchant run just to see it's going to take a lot more learning than bounty hunting bounty hunting is simple you just go find people that have the contracts they give them to you you go hunt the people down you kill them it's simple now it's not easy it's probably the hardest thing to do because they have to have all the counters for blockades and patrols and spying and wilderness adventuring you have to be able to eliminate cards to keep you from getting in fights with xenos and fights that you don't want to be in and and you got to have a powerful enough to ship to take down because a bunch of your bounties you fight in space and some of them you fight on the ground so you got to have a ground crew it's it's hard in that way and in hard mode i found it to be virtually impossible for me but it doesn't require you to know everything about trade permits and where all the good places are to buy things and where they are to sell them and have this. I would have to have the, the biggest notebook to figure that out. <laughs> I probably will someday, but that's it's just a lot of work in a different way, really. So does this guy have a mission for us? That would be of use. No, the people transport missions. We don't do that either. We're not in that business. That's not what we do. So, here. The zealot. And that's the thing about privateers, like, in that game, you, since you start out with such a junker early, there's absolutely no way you want to get into ship combat with anybody. And actually, it's a little bit terrifying at first when you're trying to jump between systems and you're hoping to God you don't run into anything that can that can actually shoot at you because there's just almost no way to survive in your absolute piece of junk Winnebago that your uncle left you. Um, but, but once you can start moving around, you can get the cargo hauler and you start to learn where all the good trade routes are. And once you get those figured out, then you can make some money and then finally move up into the fighter and start 
doing bounty hunting, which is really lucrative and is going to help you pay for all the best weapons on your fancy little ship. Um, hard mode here seems to be much the similar kind of thing where you know you can't go straight into bounty hunting, forget about it, and you're you kind of need to be a merchant and just do things like pa ferry packages, um, ferry packages and people because everything else is outside of your scope you don't have enough talents and abilities to and skills to deal with anything more than that so it makes it hard it's a serious uphill climb because there's just there's, you don't have a lot of options defensive fire protects from meteor storm we should probably have somebody that has that crew dog All right, so this, oh yeah, so we had an electronics test. We have six of those. Salvages and an orbital one passing the spice plate. Re-risk card, I'm gonna, I have two of these. I'm gonna maybe grab one more of those because we got two of those. Actually, it's probably more important to have <coughs> those purge, both of these purges really are kind of important. Train jobs. Shock trooper. Yeah, let's move you up to 11. Oh, I wanted to get the exoscout to 5. That's right. There's a couple of decent skills in there, I think. A couple of decent talents. Alright, away we go. Garrick pillars full of the Kedar. And they are angry at us. <clears throat> Here's something I should talk about with this game. If you're just going and doing the story missions or just going around and and trying to fulfill all your contracts before they become overdue, it seems pretty balanced. The problem is if you want to throw in anything else like patrolling to raise your reputation if you want to do a few extra things then it becomes more than just juggling a few plates um, if it if it was me I think with some of the story stuff especially I might have spread it out a little longer over a longer period of time um, it just it feels a little crunched at times to me it feels a little hectic It's like right now, I would like to take some time and and fix my reputation with Kadar, and that would mean a whole lot of patrolling. And I've done that before in some other games, like even being as far as behind as like 150 to 200 reputation points. It just takes a couple of years, actually, of straight patrolling, and you can get out of trouble. But then you can't do anything else. It's like a money sink to get yourself out of there. If you try to if you try to tackle it a little bit of a, at a time as you pass through systems on your way to do other missions, they all end up going overdue, and then you're just like, oh, screw it. <clears throat> um, yeah, or you can take the fast way and buy a pardon, but I don't know. You gotta save money for a ship, man. <laughs> Otherwise, then you're just gonna be dead. Being poor is nothing compared to being dead. <laughs> So this is hunting grounds. We'd have to go to the Alzean core. Okay, I honestly don't know where that one is. I feel like it's down here somewhere. Where is it? Al oh, it's over there. It's next to the Dixie Circle. Okay, well, hmm. Do we want to take that mission for him? How long do we have for it? Five years for 175K. And then we got to go where? Long sweep along, go back to the Hyperion Loop, which is always a place that we want to end up, anyways. All right, I'm, I'm okay with that. Oh, and land again. And who was the High Princess? She had a fairy mission for us, and she's got this one. Twelve jumps to where? The Juhati Spiral, which is way over here, I believe. Yeah, it's right there. Wow, we've got like potentially two missions over there. Huh. How long has that one got? Four years and 23 weeks? That's going to be a time crunch. I feel like. That's going to be the time crunch one. 
Let's not worry about that one. All right. <clears throat> we got to take the guys that we have back. Wild's bolt hole is three jumps away, and run to ground is not on first to step. So, Wild's is our next one. He had it. See, I like the I like this one. It had some ridiculous amount of time on it to start out with, like I don't know, 14, 16, 12 years, something like that. It was a long time, and that makes it reasonable to pick up other contracts along the way and to do things like patrolling and raise your reputation and all that stuff. Hmm. 2,000 hull. Captain is level 19. Carries 13 units of cargo and have 33 crew aboard. Hmm. Hmm. Not feeling good about it. Still feel like I'm being lied to. <clears throat> I'm dive in there and it's all going to be red. Which would be bad. So until I have a until I have a ship that I know I can crush them with, it's probably best to just avoid them. Where are you at? But okay, so there's an independent right here. Perfect. I keep my eye on these things as we're traveling because you can sell. Oh, you can't sell them there? Oh, why not? You can usually sell them. Legality, two versus five trade law. Oh, really? What is this? It's a five trade law. Oh. So unless we can find a world with trade law two or lower, we will need to seek out a black market. Okay. I was pretty sure there's a couple of independent places where you can sell these, but I might be wrong. So out of curiosity, where's our nearest black market person? Let's find out, shall we? Access to the black market is where? Right where? Oh, right here. It's this key. Okay. I would have expected like a pirate skull and then I could find it really fast. But it's this key thing and that doesn't, that doesn't help me. Alright. He's 9 AU away, but we don't have any rep with him. She's 3 jumps away. Do we have any intel to sell? Let's check our cargo hold. Nope. Hmm. Okay. I'll tell you what. Let's go see if he has a mission for us. Because it would help us in the future if we had access to him as we're flying by. Because we've got nothing with him. So, unknown trait. Oh, he had a, a people mover mission. Yeah. A people mover mission. Oh, rats. Rats. Okay. Where's the next one? She's three away and she's where? In the Hyperion Loop Mining? Okay. Well, she's not going to do us any good. Because we're not headed in that direction. Are we? We kind of are. We're right here. We're going to take care of this and head out. Maybe we'll go for her then. Okay. Hold on then. What are we doing down here? Right there. Well then. Maybe we will stop at the Hyperion Loop and we'll be able to sell them there. That'd be cool. Bribe. Out you go. That's what I say. Good riddance. Be gone. This is big deal. We're handing off Wild's bolt hole, baby. Due in nine years. Public procession. Marching the change fugitively all the way to the palace. Warren Officer Sarah Greaves, local agents, graciously welcomed us at the palace and we accomplished our business with the ceremony and spectacle it deserved. We gained four rep for the fuss, even if it took a little bit longer. We got paid. Another 155k for our part. Woo hoo hoo. We gained plus 10 rep with sorry. That's awesome. Okay. So now, where are you at with us? You're 75 personal rep. Yes. Okay. She had military gear, but we had already bought it. So we already bought her military gear. She has a bunch more of it. She has access to all the stuff. 
which is great. He's got access to the combo cutter, the mammoth shot. It's nice. So when we finally do want to upgrade from what we have, so the whispered text set. What do we even have? <laughs> I'm not sure. I don't have the names of these things memorized. Let's do this and look. Like, what's he got? Equip. The crater ammo. There is an upgrade from there. Okay. And with the, the dock, she had the whisper headset. And there was the tax set, I think, is what that other one is. So there, we have upgrades to have, but I'd really like to get the better armor. So we got to make rep with that person. And that person was I'm not entirely sure. Let's look. <laughs> That's what we got this for. Uh, blue. Oh no, red was my peeps. Okay, so she sold military gear. Who sold combat armor? Giselle, but we're at minus two because we didn't do her mission. Her mission timed out on us. So if we want to go, we have to get a mission from her and do it. Now, there's also this guy. What's he got? Combat armor. Steel song. Nine jumps. He's a long way off. And she's where? Cadrino Chaos. And this one is not combat armor. It's just weaponry. Okay. All right, well, we know where we're going next. We're going to the Hyperion loop because of the black market. We're gonna switch this over, filter, black market. This person, three jumps away, go. Because she has black market access and we can sell those Xeno bones or whatever they are. I guess I should be stopping along the way and checking contacts for any other contracts. That's what I should be doing. As it is, I'm gonna jump. All right. How much time do we have for this next mission? That's a good question. Because here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking, do we have time to patrol? Six jumps, four years, 41 weeks. That's pretty good. How far? 282. Wow, okay. Let's check something. Airlock must have been carrying something extremely illegal to put up a fight like that. Huh. I don't know what he had hidden on his ship or why he chose to fight to the death. I know that his brother is damaging my profits and that's what matters now. Hmm. You're hiding something. That's fine. But it's gonna cost you. You haven't told us the whole story between you and this pirate. That's fine. I don't need to know everything. I can just focus on venting his hull into the void. That is a wise decision, Captain. It still tips the balance scales, Merchant. We know Tuco is trying to hide something illegal. We will demand 25% extra for the mission, but our confrontation has cost us five of the Merchant's starting personal rep. We're willing to discuss the terms of such a deal. As it stands, we will be hunting more than one pirate. This won't be cheap, Merchant. My enterprise is coming apart at the seams. I will pay by the pit. Then let's discuss the specifics. The mission has been added to Tuco's Malgen's missions list as we are willing to hunt down the pirate Fredericks and his accomplice. Okay, so this is actually leads to an unlock. Let's discuss. Okay, so here's the bummer. It says it right over here. Wraithful Corsair. Strike down the wrathful pirate who haunts Merchant Tuco skies. Here comes the kicker. On difficulty hard or higher. Honestly, Treese brothers, I don't know why you do this. I don't know why you want to do something so disappointing. This is part of the fun of playing a game, is doing the unlocks, and you hide it behind the hardest difficulty? That's a dick move. <laughs> That's There's no other way to say that. Oh my gosh. Here I was all excited because I know this leads to an unlock. I mean, it's just, that's the single most disappointing thing about the game for me is the way all these unlocks are handled. So many of them are hidden behind the hard difficulty level and then it, and then it gets worse. They're not only hidden behind the hard difficulty level, they're hidden with, with time limits in the early part of the game before you even have 
the tools to really deal with them. It's just... It's sadistic. This is supposed to be fun. This is supposed to be the fun part of playing a game like this. Hey, I want to unlock that. I totally get wanting to give people an unlock for hard mode, but this is not cool. <laughs> this is not... This is not cool. So, that's my rant for the day on that. So that gets me to the point now where here I am. I've got this mission. It's a possibility. I just have to... I don't even want to do it. What's the point? I don't care. I don't get to unlock anything for it because I'm playing on normal. I don't want to... I just think it's dumb. I think it's dumb. I think this game is awesome except for that. And... I hate it when games are like that. I hate it when they're so close to being really good, but there's just something really fundamentally wrong with them. You know, it's like, oh, can't you see that? Don't you see how awful that is? Ah, don't you see how that kills your game? Don't you see how it kills it for players like me? Like, did you think everybody who was going to play this game was just going to adore hard mode and want to do the hardest challenge possible? Is that really what you were thinking? I mean, I know they're not. I've seen the, I've seen their Twitter responses to me. Well, this was our rationale. We wanted to reward people for playing on hard. Okay, but you just shafted everybody else. So maybe think about it that way. I just think... I, I don't know. I mean, give them a different reward for conquering the same thing on hard. Let the normal players get an unlock too, maybe. I don't know what the answer is, but I just know that that's a dick move and it feels, it feels dicky and it and it makes me not want to play the game. And it certainly makes me not want to even attempt that mission. What's the point? I don't care. Unlocks are what make games cool like this cool. And you just... You just cut a bunch of them off. You just removed a whole bunch of them and said no. It's like that old milk ad where the guy's in the interrogation room and the cops come sit down and give him a big old chocolate brownie and he bites into it because he's so hungry. And then he sticks the glass of milk down there. He says, we could do this the easy way. And then he pushes it away behind him and says, or oh, we can do it the hard way. I mean, it's just... You gave me the chocolate cake and I'm telling you, I like it. And then you pushed the milk towards me and said, Nah! <laughs> Too bad, punk. It's only for hard mode players. It's only for real men with hair on their chest and smelly armpits. Fuck them. <laughs> That's what I say. Fuck you hard mode players who think you're elitist bullshit. I don't give a crap about that. I want to play the game and have fun and do the unlocks. Jeez, I want to get the toys. I want to get the ships and the starting professions and the contacts. I want that stuff, but I don't want to beat my head over it to get it. It's the one, it's the, it's the one reason I haven't given this a Steam review yet is because I'm still on the fence about it. It's enough to make me on the fence about it because I know there's a whole bunch of players out there just like me who don't want to play hard mode games. But they want to have all the fun and do the unlocks and, and get the Steam achievements. And when developers do this, they cut a huge segment of their players right out of the equation. And it's hard for me to say, yeah, you should go buy this game. Because you know what? I know there's a bunch of players like me who, who when they discover this, like I did, are going to be really disappointed. Like, I was having a blast playing this game. And then, and then I found out there were a bunch of unlocks in hard mode. And I thought, well, okay, how, how hard can hard mode be? Oh, found that out real fast. Dark Souls thinks it's hard. <laughs> the Trees brothers are like Dark Souls. <laughs> it's a fuzzy bunny compared to us. I've got a screenshot of a, shot of a ship that ate me right after I picked up Arbiter Brokstrom. I'm two minutes into the game. <laughs> I mean, it destroyed me. It wasn't even close. It was just a massacre. Okay, there you go. Captain Dead, start over. Oh, huh, really? Okay. A few more times of that and I was, I was done. I'm not going to touch hard mode. You kidding me? So now you've, you've tied achievements 
to these things in hard mode. And it's like, well, I don't want to do that quest. I'm not going to get anything for it. What's the point? Anyway, I rambled a really long time about that, and usually I edit these rants, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna edit this one because I feel like it's too important. I mean, I just feel like this is a colossal mistake. You know, I just feel like I feel like any time you're making a video game and you purposely make decisions that remove segments of your player base from having fun, you know, that cut them out of content. I don't. I have a problem with that. I've always had a problem with that. <clears throat> I don't like it. I think it's bad design. Games should be more inclusive and less exclusive, in my opinion. And all this, all this hard mode stuff does with tying achievements to it is create this class of elitists. And I've already encountered them on the Steam forums. You know, I knew I was gonna. As soon as I saw that, as soon as I saw that. That there were achievements tied to hard mode. I thought, I know, this breeds elitism. Because the, the players who get good at the hard mode are just going to look down on everybody else. And if you go there saying, wow, this is really hard. What do I do? They're like, just get good. RTFM. Read the fucking manual. You know, it's like, you know what? You can kind of kiss my ass. I don't, I, that bothers me. That elitist mentality really bothers me. And that's what this does. This that's what that breeds, you know. It's like, hey, just let people have just let people have the unlocks, man. You gotta you don't gotta be elite about it. There's no point doing that. You guys have made a great game here. This is <laughs> I mean, look at this. Look at it graphically and the art style and the different angles that you thought about these these card games in here. And ship combat and ground combat and and uh, the number of different things that are that are possible in this game when when hard mode and it isn't trying to kick your ass. The core of this game is just fantastic, and then you and then you ruin it for a huge segment of players because of because of some elite idealistic thinking you know 12 initiative to use the smoke bomb reduce them by two. Oh well I'm sure that that whole rant is gonna cause a whole bunch of people to stop watching the series and, and I'm totally okay with that I mean that's I've learned over the years to just deal with the consequences of my um, my thought process and sharing those thought processes. <laughs> it's like people really don't like you criticizing things that they love. So you kind of get used to the idea of saying, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this. And, and people can be like, I didn't want to hear a rant. I get it. I totally get it. I understand. I think for me it just speaks to how much I like the game at its basic level. It's kind of like Star Wars, you know? Like, I love Star Wars so much like, because I grew up on it as a kid, because Empire Strikes Back just formed. It was so formative in my brain at the time as a kid watching it. And to see J.J. Abrams destroy it. <laughs> It, it makes you frustrated, you know? It makes you frustrated and it makes... And it, and it causes me to think about it. And want to speak out and say, this, this ain't right. <laughs> you care that much about something, you want to see it be the best it can be. And I don't think Star Traders tying unlocks and achievements to hard mode makes it be a great game. I don't think that makes it a great game at all. I think it makes it worse than it should be. It turns off a lot of people like me and that's just not good. This game is too good fundamentally at its base level. It's too good to be doing stuff like that. It needs more people playing it, not less. 
All right, to battle. We'll do 150k in payment. Thank goodness. There she is, right there. The target. Virginia Long, level seven. My character is level 20. Well, then prove it. Act like it. Act like you're that much stronger than the rest of them. That's that's a good start. She probably should have healed him, but taking out their doctor is a pretty good idea. Oh. Oh, really? I love how they're wearing the fur coats. Like they're too cool for school. Like they just stepped off the runway and they did the red carpet thing. We're not pirates. We're fashion pirates. <laughs> Meanwhile, they just keep swapping my people around. Pop her. There you go. Doc, I need some morale over here. Will you? Okay, what do you got for me? This is buffs yourself. It's 1.5. You're going to be in. No, you're not going to be in the penalty if you use this. Well, then use it. Boom. That's the boomstick. Alrighty. Hmm. What do you got? Let's get some poison on him. Oh, jeez. Wow. Okay. Be aggressive about it. Alright. With our enemy destroyed, we have taken command of the prisoner. We are under transport and we got paid. We got paid half now and half upon completion. Well, heck yeah. Take that bit of business. Oh, wait a minute. I had this set for officers, didn't I? Oh, fighters. Okay. Leveling. Doc. Oc. What do we got here? Military officer, combat medic. I can't remember what the level 15 doctor thing is, so I'm going to start taking combat medic. But there's some stuff in here that I want her to get. Oh, yeah. So this... Okay, hold on. i got to look at this. There are simply so many good doctor things here. It's ridiculous. Like uh, this one. Upon defeating an enemy ship, heals three crew up to blah, 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 blah. Another one of those post-ship combat things that helps you heal either your ship or your crew. Uh, which is just really nice. This one is great. Solace of Battle. Purchase your ship of both crew and ship crippling effects. And restores Dr. Skill worth of morale to the... I mean, this is fantastic in ship battle. It's awesome. Tactical Edge in crew combat. Buffs with plus 4 initiative. Plus 20 all damage and plus 10 armor for 3 turns and pushes a target forward one. That's great when you need to move somebody around. It's just huge buff. I mean, that's... If you wanted to start your your blade person in the first slot and then use this it's like hell yeah in fact I just talked myself into it so it's it's a neat little now I just gotta remember to put my blade person in the first slot but it's a neat little ability to have there uh, broadside 333 three, three. sharp steering is two I don't use that one very much or that one or evasive maneuvers hmm okay well, let's go with Guided Fire because it adds accuracy and critical. The Swordsman. Swordwoman. Swordsman. Here we go. Swordsman Assassin. Alright, now there's more Assassin stuff in here. Oh, but this is the easy one. Bravery Line. When making an initiative roll, buff with plus three initiative, critical, melee defense, three turns. Yes, please. That's, that's one I've been waiting for and looking for. Okay. So now... Five jumps, four years, 22 weeks to get paid the rest of this at 75k. And basically, we're looking for contracts along the way. And I will dub thee the episode of the rant. Oh, hold on, we didn't grab fuel, you dummy. And the crew was like, we're so sad, there's no fuel. Okay. Fuel. Pay the crew. Spice leave to make everybody happy. Oh, we don't have any more spice. Okay. What else is in here? Alright. Next system over. To the next one. Jump to the Dixie Circle. Oh my goodness. It's Kadar. Okay, there's a spot up here. But what is this? They don't have everything we need. Oh no, this isn't Kadar. This is, uh... Who is this? 
Devaltos. Well, we have some. T we have four years before I have to drop this person off. Now, obviously, I'd like to keep raking in the contracts, but if I could do a patrol here for a little bit and fix this enough, get eight rep. That's nice. I'm going to skip because I don't want to lose my Xeno bones in the cargo. Recover fuel and repair ship. That works for me. Smuggler. Oh, there went the rep card. Hmm. Bounty hunter who can be bribed. and an unexpected ship. I'll take the powerful and unexpected ship if it wants to be an indie that I can blow up. What is it? It's not. It's a Kadar. Stiff salute. Oh. Tavaltos. Okay. Trying to give myself better odds of getting some rep. Oh my god, all three of them and they just disappeared. Oh. <laughs> oh man, that was brutal. That's why I like to roll that card up there. Because it's like, give yourself a really good chance to get something new. There's the random number generator. Making you feel it. Can you feel it? <laughs> it's like XCOM. <laughs> it's retreat. Yeah, we'll bribe. Oh, he's Kadar. We can't bribe. Oh! I didn't mean to press that button. Okay, but... Our escape capabilities outrank them. So where's our flea one? And I don't mean red hot chili peppers flea. I mean they get the hell out of dodge flea. Okay. Oh, he was trying to escape too. Nice. Both of us are wiser than that. Linked rumors. Ugh. Uh, we're running low on fuel too and we're a little bit wounded probably can't afford anything else here <clears throat> I thought it, darn it yeah is there anything we can do here I'm just gonna use up the rest of my cards new contact well off we go oh yeah it's just not our day on that. Okay, map. Over here. Limp your way along. Let's take care of the crew. No medical services for our injured crew. Well, that sucks. Well, at least we can make him happy. Why is this still up here? There we go. A Xeno. Oh, brilliant. Hmm. What is he? 3,200 whole hit points. Yeah, I'm not... I'm not gonna be stupid. Even though I'm on normal and I could live through that. I still like... The thing that I do like about hard mode is the permadeath part. That's the part I like. I don't mind that. I don't mind Iron Man modes for achievements. That doesn't bother me at all. That keep the player from... Demand tribute to gain their protection. <laughs> yeah, Iron Man, hard mode, Iron Man and permadeath doesn't bother me because that's that's almost normal, you know. That's kind of like a normal part of gaming, really. Not letting the player save over and over, reload their saves over and over to try to to try to do it perfectly. I totally get that. And and this they've just the developers have described this as a roguelike. I mean Permadeath seems appropriate. It's just difficulty level is that's that's where you lose me. Alright. 
are still moving on. That ship. Always awesome to look at. They get an A plus for ship design. No doubt about that. Let's go hand this guy off and go hunt for some missions. I haven't been picking up any along the way. Oh, but there, here we are in a system where there are a bunch of them. Um, okay, let's just go hand him off. And then we can touch all these people on the way out of here and see who's going to give us jobs. Because 2.4 million, we're getting there. We're not quite where I want to be. Run to ground. All right. <laughs> Payment. Cool. All right. Well, that has been about an hour. So it wasn't quite the $1 million that we got last episode. It was half that. But it's putting us in a good position because here's, here's the future right here. <laughs> See, this is the target, the Dragoon Cruiser. And we have, you could buy it, and you'd have almost $2 million to outfit it, which is, it's enough, but it's not enough to get you the highest end upgrades on every single slot. Or you can keep rolling along until you get to that thing. Um the thing is, I don't have a really good grasp yet on all the different story elements that come along. I know there's a couple still big um, story parts to come. To, one to do with a plague and another to do with some more Xenos that are extra hard. Um, and because those things are coming, I'd really like to just keep waiting with my cash and, and wait until I can get this Catella Titan. Now, the, the Palace Freighter, which is, I've been commenting on about how cool it looks. Just so you know about that one. That one actually can be unlocked on normal. It just has to be unlocked early. Visit 10 new planets on difficulty normal or higher in less than one year. Um, if it were me, just me saying, this before 2.11.03, gone. I'd, the achievement is visit 10 new planets in less than a year. This, this extra part. That's the teacher handing you the test and saying, I only have one question and it's in 27 parts. <laughs> and then Roddy Dangerfield's like, what? <laughs> you know, again, dick move. So, I'd, I'd like to try that freighter out too sometime, but, you know, now i got to remember, you know, it's like, oh yeah, start the game over, okay, let's make a game just for this, hmm. whatever. At any rate, our captain, Kylo Ren here now, has no missions, <laughs> so, but we have a ton of contacts in this system, and, let's see, oh, before the episode ends, we got a couple minutes left. Here's our black market person. Oh, come on. Really? You want to throw a pirate at me right now? Okay. Show me your black market. Oh, she's got a piece of a story for us. Many welcome, Star Trader. You arrived at the auspicious hour. I long paid my dues as a smuggler. I've kept black markets and smuggler princes across this quadrant in business with my trade. All right. Oh, it's time that I break out on my own. I've been pre preparing for a long time for my next move. For my master plan. My crowning. That sounds both risky and lucrative. Yes. I need the captain to help me execute it ruthlessly. I can promise the credits will flow if you join me. Join me, Kylo Ren. What kind of work are we talking I need to stockpile pricey commodities. Pay some hefty bribes and make a few rivals go away permanently. It all has to be quiet and under the spice plate. 
With our help, she could upgrade to Smuggler Princess. It will take dedication, but we could help her achieve another level. Hmm, okay. Tell us the first step, and we'll sail the stars for you. First part of the plan requires a massive stash of vodka. How much? You can't be serious. <laughs> All right, I'm going to pay you a big number, and then I need you to run a series of bribes and silence a few rivals. A mission to snatch a huge mass of vodka in the wilderness has been handed to your smuggler's mission list. The mission named Ocean of Vodka is required to finish the plan. Our smuggler will offer us other missions required to prepare for the shortages in addition for the vodka stashing. We must complete five other missions for the mission goal. Finally, two personal objectives have been added that warn us of locations where a shortage rumor will be created when the plan goes into motion. We should be sure to prepare to take advantage of these. So if you're a merchant with big fat cargo holds, it's pretty cool. Let's talk about one other thing here. So crowned smuggler. Help an underworld contact ascend to smuggler royalty on difficulty or normal or higher. And then it unlocks this person as a contact weapon smuggler. So this one, this story piece, you actually can do on normal and there's no pre-time deadline or whatever. There's no deadline limit like there is on a lot of these other ones. This, this is how you do an achievement. So the question is, do it, you know, I'm not really set up on this playthrough to do this one, but it would be cool to do it. So I might have to look into it. Um, let's go look at one other thing. To stress the point, the difference here is, I like having the option to not do it even though it's available because, and to not do it because my ship and crew aren't really configured to do it. I'm not much of a trader. I don't have big cargo holds, but the other is it's almost not a choice. It's like, I, I can't do that. That's hard mode. I'm, I'm not cut out for that. <laughs> you know, so there's a big difference there <laughs> between basically being locked out and then choosing not to do it. I like to have the choice. I think every player does. Her little mission list here. Oh gosh, planned man. I mean, it's 12 years. Oh my gosh, 12 years. And then. I don't want to look at that. I want to look at this. Crowning plan. One drop at a time, ocean of vodka. We have a 25 cargo hold. We would need to make five runs from wherever we can buy the vodka. Which, by the way, wherever you're going to buy it, you're probably not going to be able to get 112 out of it. And this is four years and 42 weeks. We'd be doing just this for 110k. Hmm. This is why you want to have a ship that just is set up specifically to do this, I think. You want to have a ship that has a whole bunch of cargo holds and is really fast. And all it's going to do is run away. Um, we don't have that ship. But I can see, you know, doing it. Setting up a captain to do it. And doing a playthrough with that in mind. Because you'd be sitting here where we're at right now. It's, this is a good thing to note. It's the year tw 235. Week 41. And we have 2.5 million in the bank. You could buy a ship. And outfit it just for speed and escape. And big fat cargo holds and do it now. We can't see it at this system, but like, let's imagine for a second what we might do. This is how we'll end the episode. I, I like doing the speculating, it's kind of fun. I mean, what would you do to do that mission? Um, for instance, how big of a cargo hold you, could you get? This store is 25 cargo. How big of a cargo hold you, you get? 45? So you'd kind of need like, three of these bad points <laughs> you'd need two in the large slot they hold 70 fuel so this is 160 fuel capacity and this is 40 that gives me 200 total if you put two cargos there you'd only end up with 140 so uh, you'd end up with 60 less you would have to make that up with some fuel somewhere else because we're at what I consider the short end of it I mean we can do infinite helix but we have to stop. Other ships can't. Other, if you have less than this amount of fuel, going through really long systems that have like infinite helix where everything is really spread out, you end up with morale and people leave. Morale problems from less fuel 
and your crew just takes off. So there's a certain limit. And what I like to do is like the next ship up, the next two ships up if I go that far, any ship after this Fidelis cutter, over 300 fuel. But just speculating, you're looking at two cargo holds of 45 piece for 90 and then another one in a medium slot somewhere. Um, and then you just have to go all defense and escape. So what kind of ship would you really want to use if you were going to do that? That's the question. You need something with a lot of slots. Oh yeah, and then there's this bad boy. <laughs> I forgot about this. You get this guy through an unlock, I think, of some kind. The Neotquam Cruiser. This thing is... <laughs> it's... It's pretty incredible because uh, it's got 26 slots. You look at anything in the same the same mass range. This has 23. This 23. Tw no, they both have 22. This has 23. It's locked. This is locked at 23. This is 6,000 as well. It's locked as 23. This is locked. Is not locked, and it has 24 components. This one has 23. 23 the Fidelis cruiser which we start with it which has 23 and then you move up into the next weight class so this thing here it's oh my gosh it's got 26 slots wow three fuel per au and five per encounter compare that to ours it's the same it's just that's it's three more slots that's and what are they? Ours are 4, 7, 12. It's 5, 9, and 12. Oh my goodness. There's another extra slot then. See, you could put three cargos on there. At 70 fuel apiece for 210 extra fuel and enough cargo space to do the whole thing. But it's so expensive. Oh my gosh. Okay. But this, I mean, this thing would be a badass cargo hauler. It's got seven crew members. <laughs> I mean, seven officers and 36 crew. It's just, it's pretty cool. It's pretty neat. So that, you know, it's one of those options. I don't know what else would be a good option in here. I haven't even gone around and thought about what would I build if I was just going to build a big, huge cargo hauling freighter. But there's there's options here, and it's really cool um, to think about. So anyway, it's been it's been fun. It's been a ranty episode, I know. I, um, not really going to apologize for that. <laughs> I have strong opinions. And I have strong opinions about this game. And the reason I have really strong opinions about it is because I like it. You know. And, and, and I find that the whole deal with unlocks to be disappointing. So, if I thought the game sucked or I didn't care, I'd just get rid of it. <laughs> and I wouldn't, and I wouldn't voice my opinion and I wouldn't be vocal about it and, and uh, I wouldn't be passionate about it. It's like, it's like uh, Pillars of it. I mean, uh, <laughs> Pathfinder, Wrath of the Righteous. I wanted to love that game so much, but in the end, it was a pile of garbage. And the mission that the it was so difficult that it <laughs> it definitely wanted to be a Dark Souls RPG. It wanted to be Baldur's Gate meets Dark Souls. Baldur's Gate and Dark Souls had a love baby and that's what it was. And it was awful. I installed it off my machine a couple of days ago. I just uninstalled it. I just deleted it and I didn't even finish it. And there are very few games that I do not finish. But both of the Pillars of Eternity games are in that. I mean not Pillars of Eternity. Both of those Pathfinder games. Pathfinder Kingmaker and Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. I didn't finish either one of them. And they both got DNF'd and they both got nuked off my hard drive. And and that's just I'm not going to talk about it anymore. I don't care. But I'm going to keep talking about Star Traders because I like it. At a fundamental level, I like it. I don't just like it. I love it. I think it's a really great game. But you guys got to do something about these achievements, man. They're fun. They they could be the funnest part of the game. Could be. All right, everyone. As always, if you dig it, thumbs up. And if you don't. Guess what? YouTube hid the thumbs down button. So the only person who can see the results are me. Uh, as always, leave your questions, comments down below. I really appreciate the input that so many of you have given me over the course of the series. You gave me some really helpful tips and and taught me some things I didn't know, which I really appreciate. It's been really useful. 
um, subscribe to the channel. Patreon is listed in the description below. There will be more episodes. I'm going to keep going because there are a couple of really bigger storyline elements coming on later that I want to that I want to go through. The game doesn't have a defined end, which is kind of disappointing. But because you kind of are like, is that it? I, have I reached all the stories? Have I gone through all the events that happen in the timeline up here? You know, when you're looking at your date. Have I gone through everything? I don't. I don't know. I, I I played one playthrough for a long time. Going, is this? Is there anything else? I really don't know, and I had to get on a wiki and look. Um, so that to me is like less than ideal. Um, I've always thought it was cool when a game gives you an end. Here, you know, I just said my sign off, but I have more opinions here, and these are. The, I'm going to say this. One of the games that does this really really well is Fallout Four. And, and Fallout historically has always done this really good where you get to the end of the game and it shows you these these you know still screen vignettes of and tells you what happened to all the people that you encountered well Joe Blow over here ate a poison lizard and died you know kind of thing and it's like you get to see what happens and then you can still keep playing you can do that in Fallout 4 it's like yeah you you can end the story you can come to the end and get the ending screens and get the ending narratives and have Ron Perlman telling you but war war never changes and then you can keep playing I think that's the proper way to do it in an open-ended game at least give the players who like closure some kind of ending and don't just let them keep playing wondering is there going to be more story coming along are there more story quests coming? Am I going to get anything else going to unwrap here? Because then, you know, that's not a good feeling either. Not knowing. It's like running down a hallway in the dark blindfold. <laughs> Where's the end? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so, um, it's something to think about, especially because they've created so many interesting little quest lines here and unique characters. Uh, it would be nice to have an ending with a little splash of, of of screens telling you this is what happened, you know, or just e or just even a little um, comic book kind of of uh, synopsis of what happened. For instance, oh, there was a really great game that did this, and I can't remember what it was. Oh God, I really wish I could remember. Long episode as always. I'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching.